couple of years ago. Let me think. 2010? I had Dan and Katie over for dinner, and they wanted to see my garden. It was the first growing season after I installed top bar hives on my land. And the whole garden burst with the fruits of bee labor a bumper crop of Ozark Beauty strawberries like I'd never seen before. So of course back then, no one needed to hide their bees. To celebrate my new garden, I made strawberry crumble. Decadent, right? I know it's hard to imagine to have enough strawberries, but before we lost bees, you could actually afford to get a couple of quarts of them for less than 10 bucks. Even the hydroponic ones, I miss that. Happy bees are transferring strawberry pollen for free. So how did we repay this system? Well, we took their honey and gave them corn syrup. Anyway, Katie had this look of pure bliss every time she took a bite of that crumble. She had to have the whole shebang. The bees, the berries, the top bars. I told her I'd get her set up and it would take a lot of commitment. And then life happened. Not sure why, but I lost touch with them. And before I knew it, years had flown by. What started out as a small act of joy for me, maintaining a small habitat for bees, really changed when I joined the underground movement of bee guardians. I understood that my little garden, my little patch of heaven, wasn't just for me. I was actually trying to save the planet. Our goal had been to keep bees alive on a planet that was quickly eliminating their habitat. Agribusiness was doing everything. We decided the best place to save bees was by keeping them in places people didn't used to keep bees. At first, this was appreciated. Our grassroots initiatives, our money, everything was going well. Our local knowledge wasn't costing anybody anything, and we were very successful. But then things turned. What we had known for years became undeniable. Everybody realized there were no more insects flying. The government got in bed with special interests, and anything that might be a pollinator had to be secured. And it was the American thing to do to give over your bees. I am now one of the few bee guardians that managed to lay low. Yeah, I have a couple of hives. I won't tell you how many. Now, here's the crazy part of the story. A couple of months ago, I get this voicemail. No shit, from Dan. He's really desperate. Katie has been jonesing, depressed. The bees had died. She was spending all her time in the Museum of Extinct Flowers and keeps mentioning the strawberry crumble we had. Damn, I wish she wouldn't say that shit in public. I invited them both over. Yeah, maybe I missed them and I was kind of curious, but also to explain to Dan you don't talk about $5,000 in strawberries over the phone. Dan had no idea. He felt terrible. Katie, she knew. I told her again that I would set her up as part of the underground. When my next colony swarmed, she could keep her own bees and grow her own strawberries. I explained to her that the more of us there were, the more likely we would be able to save the bees. There would be honey, there would be honey bees, and maybe there would be fruit forever. She understood the new security risks associated with providing safe harbor for bees, but decided that the risks of not keeping them were far greater.